<clears throat> hello, hello. Let's get started here. So I have to set up the camera so YouTube doesn't uh, switch the orientation on me. I finally got it to shoot in uh, widescreen, finally. Very close though. Anyway, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we're going to talk about how to connect the head, neck, and uh, body, the upper torso, when you're doing figure drawing. So it's a very simple. On the, on the surface, it's a very simple thing, and it's something that can be easily ignored. Most of the time when we draw the figure, we just care about the, the body, and then we care about the face, but everything else we uh, just kind of ignore. Um, but unfortunately, the neck is so close to the face that you have to get it right. If you don't get it right, then it will kind of ruin the effect, and of course, it will take away from the quality and the naturalism that you want. And um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to um, uh, talk about some strategies, some techniques you can use, and then we're going to do a couple demonstrations. And if you like this video, and if you like my work, I have uh, more free lessons, figure drawing downloads and resources available on my website at www.drawwithchris.com. And there you can enter your email and sign up for my free insider's email list and get access to a bunch of exclusive downloads. i got a big figure drawing download now that includes references, handouts, study guides, video lessons, and a whole lot more. So go to www.drawwithchris.com. And before we begin, comment below, where are you located? Where are you watching from and what time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand and it's 10 a.m. for me, Thursday morning. So thank you for being here wherever you are. Head and neck and body connection. So the first thing we need to know are what are the structures of the head or what are the structures of what we need to do. We all know them already. And then we need to find anchor points and then connect the anchor points. It's pretty simple. So. The three structures we have, obviously, is we have the head. Uh, let's see. Let's draw this with a pen. Uh, 
the head, neck, Upper torso, jeez. It's so weird to write on camera. We basically have this thing we all know. some kind of necky structure we all know that and then the upper body So this is the guy that we need to make sure that the head and the body relate correctly. Because that's really what we want. We don't want to draw a perfect, well, we do want to draw a nice anatomy. We don't have to be perfect. But the key word is relationship, relate. We have to relate this to this. That's right here. So we got to get all of this to look kind of right. So these are the three things we need. We need the head relate to the body correctly, and that's where the neck comes in. And what are the anchor points? The anchor points are center line, pit of the neck, Point of the shoulder and finally the ear I would argue these two are probably well this one's pretty important <laughs> they're, all, they're all important but the ears is a, is a um, one of those um, underappreciated landmarks these are also known as landmarks 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 okay Okay, so when we draw a face, we know the importance of center line. We know that. But what we need to see is actually the center line continue down underneath the chin, underneath the jaw, directly in the center of the neck and throat. So your th throat would be here. Your throat structures would be here. So let's curve that center line a little bit. And then down into what's called 
the pit of the neck, which is the second landmark, and that is the center of your clavicles. So center line at the chin, center of your clavicles, pit of the neck. And you can do this at home. Go ahead, put your finger right between your collarbones. They're also called collarbones. And you can see it'll make your voice sound like this. See, I'm pressing my pit of the neck right now. So whenever I draw the figure, I'm always looking for this. So if you can just do these two things correctly, you have you're about 50% done, right? You at least have the front working, but we also need the sides and the back. We're not gonna talk about the back today. We're not gonna talk about the back today, but we need the sides. So for the sides, what we need is the ear, more specifically, just behind the ear, And the point of the shoulder. Now, the point of the shoulder is made up of three things. The shoulder complex is very complicated. But there's three bony parts that we need to look for. One is the point of the clavicle. I forgot what it's called. There's the bone, which is the head of your arm bone. And then in the back, there's the bone of your scapula. It's, I believe it's called the acromanium process. So all of, all of these things depending on the pose, depending on the model, you'll see some kind of bony point. But basically, the, what we want is um, any point of the shoulder that we can draw and follow to create the outer line of the trapezius, you see? We all know we all know and see and have drawn this line, but what this line is is, the, is a muscle. It's in the back. It's called the trapezius, and, and it has some thickness. And then from the, from the ear to, to complete the side profile of the neck, we need the back of the ear exactly where the trapezius goes from the back of the ear to the pit of the neck again, and then this, we could also make it a tube, which we'll s show later. And that's really it. That's really it. And then all we need to do is to start to describe form, but we know essentially, form-wise, what this is. It's essentially a cylinder, we know that. Essentially a cylinder with some kind of strange cone-like shape at the bottom. We know that, we know that. We know the neck is basically a cylinder. And then your, the upper, the traps, this part, is essentially some kind of cone, rounded cone kind of geometric shape. So that's, uh, that's basically the landmarks that I'm always looking for. Just to quickly review, because these are important. Center line, especially at the chin, Center line following it down to the pit of the neck. This is number one right here. This is number one. You gotta find that. If you don't find this, you're in trouble. The back of the ear, which will give you also the side of the neck. This is, this is actually a thick muscle, sternocleidomastoid. And then the points of the shoulder for the trapezius. And I just want to quickly um, <laughs> plug my book. I have a book called Life Drawing for Artists. Comment below if you have my book. It's in five languages now, I believe. And in this beautiful book, 
you can see I did a detailed uh, chapter on drawing the neck because that's how important it is. In my life drawing philosophy, the head is obviously important in anybody's life drawing process. But the head, the head doesn't work unless we can attach it to the body properly. So, and then I even talk about the, uh, the back view. This is the muscle I mentioned. You see how it goes from the ear to the pit of the neck? And it's thick. It's a tube, actually. This is the two-dimensional shape of it. But we'll talk about the three-dimensional shape of it uh, next. So that's a tube. Cylinder. So that's my book. So now let's do uh, some demonstrations here. Oh, and by the way, if you uh, like this video so far and you just joined us, uh, we're drawing the head and neck today, connecting the head and the neck. And if you like this video so far, and if you want more uh, figure drawing resources, I have a big figure drawing download, including you can get a free preview of my book. Um, and all you have to do is go to www.drawwithchris.com, and there you can enter your email. Join my... <coughs> insider's email list and then you can get uh, instant access to this huge figure drawing download I just uh, I have now available you get a free preview of my book as long as uh, 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 along with references and other figure drawing resources so go to www.drawwithchris.com Okay, here's an easy one. You could see uh, clearly. Remember the key landmarks, pit of the neck, center line, the ear, and the shoulder, which we can't see, it's hidden behind the muscle. But let's just start with what we have here. You see how I automatically <laughs> draw the rhythm as I'm doing this lay-in. I'm already uh, setting myself up for the neck. So we can't quite see the shoulder. We can see his shoulder muscles, obviously. So we know that they're that they're uh, underneath all of the all that muscle. So I can see his center line easily. I can see the pit of the center of his chin. See the pit of his neck easily. It's right above his jewelry. 
we can see his ear clearly and the back of his ear. The shoulder is under here, it's buried under the muscle. But we can see the line of the clavicle. So when we draw, Once we establish Once we establish the center of the head, I draw a line. You saw me do this already. Draw a line down to where approximately the pit of the neck will be. And then I take the back of the ear and sort of follow the rhythm of the skull. You see the rhythm of the skull? Well, kind of kind of give me the rhythm of the sternomastoid, which is the rhythm from the back of the ear to the pit of the neck. And you can see it on our model here. If you look at our model, you can see right there is very clear. You can see the shape as well. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then normally these trapezius will follow to the shoulder points. Remember, it's the bone we're looking for. But um, he's uh, in, his, in this particular pose. They're hidden. And he's also very muscular, so we can't see them. But that's essentially it. It's essentially it. Now, in terms of form, we know that the neck is essentially a tube, but this is also a tubular, tubular form, and this is also sort of tubular. So when we draw and design the forms, we want to make sure that they feel like three-dimensional forms. It's okay to start flat and graphic, as, as you saw me do. But eventually, we have to describe the form correctly. So that's why it's so important to understand the landmarks and the structures. Because once you understand the landmarks and the structures, you'll know, okay, well, this rhythm is very tubular. This rhythm is tubular, but with the throat box. This thing is sort of, sort of, uh, it looks like that, right, your trapezius. And it's not quite this way, but the form is more this way. They kind of, they're kind of like double tubes kind of things. That's more of what the uh, trapezius muscle looks like in front view anyway. In back view, it's, it's a lot different. And then we know that clavicle, hard line, hard edge, because that's a bone, that's a contour. And that's pretty much it. Let's do another demonstration here. So start with the head, whatever appropriate shape you like. The important thing is not so much should I start with an egg or a box. The important thing is the position and the nature. Is it, does the, whatever you're drawing kind of resemble the model? And then make sure it's at the right position. So I'm already making sure center line is correct. So really, um, The head, uh, the neck is, is inseparable from head drawing technique. If we draw the head correctly, we set ourselves up to draw the neck correctly. And if we understand 
the structures of the neck, we understand the structures of the head, especially the ear, of course, and center line. So there's my little head right there. Sorry, it's off screen. So now we got a we got a body to draw, right? <laughs> how do we how do we get there? Well, center line, pit of the neck. Now I look for shoulder line or the angle of the shoulder. So her angle is like that, right? Angle of the shoulder is like that. So my guess was pretty good. I already put a guess down. That's just there for me to start the process. So pit of the neck. The sternocleidomastoid rhythm, but from behind the ear to the clavicle, and from behind the ear to the point of the shoulder. And that's what the, this, this line does. It just kind of gives me an approximation of where the shoulder line, where the shoulder points are. And if you look on our subject here, our model here, you see that bony corner right there? You see that little corner? Boop, boop. See that sharp corner? Boop, boop. That sharp corner is the head of her humerus. That's the head of the arm bone. Remember I told you? There's three bony things in the shoulder that can make a point. So we just, just find one of them. Depends, it'll change whatever pose. Just find one of them and just get in the zone. Get in the approximate, in the, in the area and make sure that the, uh, that the angle is correct. The width is about correct. I can't, I don't think mine is correct. And then once you have this two-dimensional approximation, what I'd like to do is go down Give myself a bit more torso so I could see the proportion. So now you could see, by doing that, you can see how how uh, I made the the body too big. And then now, so we are still in 2D land, I'm just gonna give myself a bit more information. So I can locate this 100%, the clavicle. And you can see it on our model, you can see it in shadow right here. I think she has tattoos, are those tattoos? There's marks right here. Did I make those marks? Oh, that's good. Anyway, see where those marks are on the photo? That's the bottom of her clavicle. On the top, there's a little bit of shadow. Now, her hand is blocking the other trapezius, so we have to guess a little bit, but that's okay. The most important thing is, is the shape, the proportion, and the position. So we got all of those working. So now I can confidently move down with the figure if I wanted. Let's keep going down with the figure, but let's talk about the neck. So we know structurally that this is um, this is a um, cylinder, and we have nice light here. So now we can start to use the light to suggest form. So what I'm doing is just putting a nice tone because remember we have sort of a boxy cylinder with this sort of throat boxy thing in the middle. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It is quite boxy. There's a small bone here. I believe it's called the hyoid bone.
and then as it gets to the pit of the neck, then the the tendon, or I'm not sure if it's the tendon or the muscle belly of the sternomastoid from the side comes in. So I'm, right now I'm looking at the shadow shape, but I already understand the form. It's the same form as we talked about. Now one of the important things to get to read is this part. So what we have is we have a cylinder. We have a cylinder that's transitioning into a cone, right? But the cone isn't like this. Remember, the cone is more like this. It's actually, there's actually negative space here, a bit of negative space. There's, there's uh, veins and arteries and things like that there. But you see this? You see that? That's right here. So we, to get the side of the neck to look right, all we have to do is suggest this kind of form. And it, sometimes all it takes is a little bit of tone, a little bit of tone, and then a, a touch of light half tone, maybe down here, and a touch of transition tone, maybe here at the neck, and where they meet, a little touch of tone, a little touch of cast shadow. And her hand is, would be here. Her shoulders here. And then we can put a touch of tone at the clavicle to exaggerate it. And that's about it right there. Real simple. How much time we got? So you saw the 2D process, saw the 3D process, and then you saw moving towards form with using the light and shadow that we have from the model. Let's do one more example. All right, let's do one more example here. And if you just joined us, we're drawing some head and necks today. So this one we can't see. We can't see the pit of the necks in shadow. Oh, I, you, you can see it if you know what you're looking for. And this one is quite distorted. Look at the distortion that's happening in his, in his uh, neck muscles. But we can clearly see the point of the shoulder. It's actually, is that a highlight? So this highlight, I believe, is the bump of the acromenium. It could be, or it could be the, the bump of his bone. Uh, but that, that's a, you see the connection that's happening here? You see the flow from the ear here ear here and then from the ear here there's a break because his neck is looking up but it goes ear break corner boom you see boom boom uh, boom uh, boom and you can clearly see this one here here and then the the clavicles go like this so you see boom 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 so that's that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for the anchor points and how they relate and that's really the key if you remember one thing, oops, if you remember one thing today, it's this word, relate. It's not so much, oh, I got to draw a perfect neck, with per a head, with perfect anatomy. Oh, I got to draw all the sternocleidomastoid, tetrapezius, uh, left ventricle, clavicle, artery. Oh, oh I got to draw the acromenium, uh, sternum, oh, oh, the pectoralis minor. No. It's not about perfect anatomy. It's about relating the pieces. It's the relationship. 
relationship from the head to the neck, uh, from the head to the body, from the head to the body, from the ear to the body. That's what we're after. We're after relationships. So anyway, that's the core philosophical message. You're probably like, I don't care, Chris. Just show me how to draw. Show me how to draw this neck. All right, all right, all right. I'll show you how to draw the neck. Relax. So really, the neck to me is the relationship of the head to the body. And as you know, from my philosophy, or maybe uh, you, uh, this is also true in the academic, true academic sense, or maybe you like Steve Houston. The core fundamental job um, is to show the relationship between the, the, the forms. So yes, we have to draw nice forms, muscles, faces, hands, rib cages, whatever. Ooh, this one's complex, actually. So this one's quite complex. You kind of have to know a lot about the body. <laughs> or at least the shoulder joint. And the only reason why I know a lot about shoulder joints is I got so many, so many dang injuries. I've had like three shoulder injuries in my life. So <laughs> it forced me to study the shoulder. Sport, sports injuries, you know. Just uh, being athletic, playing sports. Comment below, anybody watching here has ever had a shoulder injury? You know what I'm talking about. They're very common if you're athletic. Okay, so let's, let's get this. In, in, in a 2D sense, it already looks good because I'm already making good decisions. But let, let's let's fill this out. Let's finish the job here. So this is all muscle. This is his trapezius muscle. We're seeing. Remember, I told you the trapezius. Remember, I said the trapezius looks like that, right? Remember, like that. It's it's not quite. A cone, it's more of a thick cylinder. You can see it here. You can see it here. You see? You see how thick it is? It's quite thick. And then there's that little gap. So that little gap, that's the front end of the trapezius. That little bit of bit of tone right there. That's the that's the border of the trapezius. So we got that. The clavicle is kind of hidden under all this muscle. But see that highlight right there? You can follow his neck down. There's a point right here. And then there's a bit of highlight. See that highlight right there? And that highlight right there, guess what? That is the path of the clavicle. But it's hidden underneath all this muscle. So you kind of have to know a little bit. This is, this is a bit complicated. I got to admit, I don't know why I picked this one. I just wanted to impress you guys with my anatomy knowledge. <laughs> not, not, not really. But you know you will. You will get complex necks like this, so it's part of the job. You can review this if it's helpful. All of these are. This 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 is. Uh, all this stuff right here, that's uh, pectoralis. That's muscle. We don't need that, but we do need. What's above it, what the muscle attaches to you. Pectoralis actually attaches to your clavicles. They make up your shoulder joint. Did you know that? That your chest muscle is actually part of your shoulder. Physiologically, structurally. And on this side, we got a lot of shadow here on this side. 
I don't see the point of his shoulder. It's hidden behind his chin. But we can see right here, I don't know if you guys can see on camera, but I can see there's a bit of a darker part of the shadow in the cast shadow. Watch, I'll, I'll show you. So here's the cast shadow, right? We can all see the cast shadow of his neck. And part of his, uh, he's even got muscles, he's even got big muscles on his face, this guy. We can all clearly see the cast shadow, but underneath, right here, there's a little bit of darker shadow right here. And that's, that's going to the point of the shoulder. That's the clavicle, that's what we want. This is the trapezius, clavicles in highlight, pectoralis muscle, deltoid muscle, shoulder muscle. I mean, we're really done with the neck here. I just want to complete the whole picture so you can see how they all relate. You see, I'm really done with the neck, but I can't get the neck to look right unless it relates to the shoulder correctly. I can't get the neck to look right unless it relates to the shoulder and tricep and elbow. You see, all of this, really, philosophically, this is all important, right? This all, we all need to get this right. But you see, I don't just go, oh, I'm going to draw a face and a neck, and that, that's it. Or, oh, oh, okay, well, Chris said draw the clavicle. Face, neck, clavicle, okay, I'm done. But, you know, this, this, the clavicles have a, have a point, and the part of the neck, the trapezius, has uh, has uh, has a beginning and an end, has an origin and insertion, and that is part of. That is why the shoulder complex is so important because it's part of the trapezius. The trapezius is part of your shoulder complex. So in essence, the neck and the shoulder are one unit. In essence. So we got to get them to relate together. And that's sort of, that's sort of why I made this video, because I've seen, uh, you know, I've been teaching for many, many years now. <laughs> and I've been seeing a lot of beautiful drawings lately from uh, uh, various students and things, and uh, students that I work with. And I'm seeing beautiful pieces. I'm seeing beautiful heads. I'm seeing beautiful shoulders. I'm seeing beautiful torsos. But the relationship from the head to the torso to the shoulders is, is, is lacking. So that's kind of why I'm hoping this video will, um, will be helpful to those folks. That's really about it. So we're done. <laughs> I, I, I was done about two minutes ago. I just wanted to keep talking. We, actually, we did the hard part already. Now, we, now we're doing the fun part, which is the shading and making all the cool shapes. Uh, but anyway. That's a good. That's a good stopping point for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And by the way, speaking of students, if you want to be uh, one of my students, if you want to work with me personally, I do have uh, coaching and mentoring. Um, so you can learn more about that on my website, www.drawwithchris.com. And there you can also um, access lots of free resources, articles. You can get a, uh, a free preview of my book. So you can learn a lot about the figure um, and um, can, you can download a huge figure drawing download resource download that I just uploaded. 
So all you have to do is go to www.drawwithchris.com, and there you can enter your email and join my free insider's email list, and you get instant access to all of these figure drawing resources, as well as head drawing color as well. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.